Hey YouTube, Tom again, and I'm back with another Cricut Wireless uh, prepaid phone. This one being the ZTE Grand X Max Plus. It's quite a mouthful. It's a Android phone, six inch screen. It's a massive phone, and uh, it's great for uh, you know viewing media and such. But uh, before we get into the review, I'd like to say that uh, if you've been watching my channel at all, it's a lot of Microsoft products. I consider myself a fan of Microsoft, I just don't consider myself a fanboy of Microsoft. And I don't think anybody should be a fanboy of any company. Because in the end, these companies, all they care about you is your money. And uh, you should get whatever works for you the best, you know, your budget and your needs. And it used to be back in the day that uh, you need to buy all Apple to have the full experience of Apple. Or you'd have to buy all Microsoft. These days, there's so much interplay between that there's not so much a need. You could have an iMac, a Surface, and an Android phone, and if that works for you, and uh, they all can play along nice together nowadays. And the reason I'm sort of shying away from Microsoft phone right now is because of the lack of apps. Now, I've said it in the past that a lot of the apps you can get on an Android phone, you could get mobile versions through the web browser, but they're not as functional, they're not as easy to use, or maybe not even as secure as the actual apps. And it is a pain to, you know, have to go through Internet Explorer. So, I mean, traditional apps on a smartphone, you, you need them. And uh, Windows 10 just came out, and I, I love it. It's perfect. Uh, I'm not saying it's not without its bugs. It seems like it has been rushed. But I think in the next, you know, month or so, because they have been pushing out updates even since I've updated, and it's only been a few days ago, that uh, it's going to be uh, a lot better. It's going to be smoother. But so far, I mean, the Edge browser is just amazing to me. It's faster than when I had a Chromebook, and the whole thing of Chromebooks was, you know, web pages load like a snap, and it's on the level of that. Anyways, enough about Microsoft. This is a review about the ZTE Grand X Max Plus. <sighs> still a mouthful, Android phone, and um, I'm really surprised by it. You can get it from Cricut, and it's a fantastic phone. It runs Kit Kat. Um, it has a little bit of a, a strange skin to it, but it's not uh, ugly skin. It's just that the settings menu is a little bare, but uh, let's get into the review, and I'll show you the pros and cons, and let's get started. Okay, now we're going to start off with the build and design of the ZTE. And uh, this is something that's really important to me, is how well a phone feels and looks. And honestly, it's really nice. It feels kind of premium. It has Gorilla Glass on the front and back. And this uh, kind of Kevlar weave design underneath the glass. It's very, uh, you know, slim, which helps in the handling of such a huge phone. And uh, it has plastic bezels, which are sort of cheap feeling, but not hollow. Still everything solid on the phone, which is which is nice in, you know, a mid-range phone that you don't have that uh, creaks or that hollowness to it. Now a concern that everybody seems to have is that they say this phone is very slippery because of its uh, glass front and back, but I find that it's actually got some grip to it. I mean, if you run your finger down any piece of glass, there is that tactileness to it. Not a whole lot, but I'd say a lot more than your average, you know, glossy plastic phone. And you can see it right here. It, it, there is some resistance. You're most likely to drop this because of the size. It's hard to grip sometimes, and one-handed functions, while manageable, you're not going to be doing as much as you could, say, on a 5-inch phone. But you can do some things on this phone one-handed. But for the most part, and just for safety's sake, I would suggest using two hands to do anything on this phone. And I'm against cases, I really am. I, I got a case really cheap off of Amazon, but the problem w with cases are they just make phones not as ergonomical to me. And with this phone especially, it's so big to begin with, you add on a little extra width, you add on a little extra depth, and it really limits what you can do. But with that being said, I did drop this already and my heart almost stopped. Luckily, it dropped from a 
a picnic table onto rocks but on the edge and there was only a small chip right there in the plastic and that was it so I got lucky that time it was because I was being careless I mean you have to be aware of the size of this phone and you know take the extra precaution if you want to get a case go ahead but I'm telling you it makes it into almost a small portable TV in your pocket it's it's not for me but it might be for you and like I said Amazon has a few cases and they're insanely great priced but that's probably because they come from China so don't expect it to be here the day after you order now I don't want to keep mentioning size because it might scare some people away but I think it's helpful to show you in comparison to other phones exactly how big this is right here I have a 4.7 inch Nokia and you can see right there that's pretty massive and this is a 640 5 inch screen and still way way massive and this is like a common size for people 5 inch phones nowadays or 5.1 so you're going to get quite a shock when you handle this phone and even bring it home further this is a 5.5 inch HTC and it is still slightly larger even though HTC puts in those big bezels for their boom sound and uh, I feel like this could have been shortened if it wasn't for the large bezels at top and bottom but all in all don't let the size of the phone scare you because after using it for a while you make concessions you learn how to use it and having so much real estate it's great on the eyes and it, it you can't go back to smaller phones after you use a large phone but prepared to look like a little bit of a, a freak holding this thing up to your head to make phone calls I usually use a phone just for browsing the web and text but if you make a lot of phone calls you're gonna get a lot of funny looks there is an issue when making calls that through the earpiece you will hear uh, a little bit of static it's very light it's not too bad it's a little annoying when there's a silence on the line but uh, it's not present when you put on the speaker phone and the caller doesn't hear it either so it's only on your end and it's probably something with the speaker I don't know if it could be fixed with an update but being that this runs on Cricut and it's an Android phone I don't expect any updates to actually be pushed to this phone it could happen but uh, I wouldn't expect it now because it's such a large phone it has a large 720p display and a lot of people think well 720 is no good anymore there's 1080 but on a phone 720 is perfect I think you only notice that it's 720 maybe when playing video it's not as sharp as say your 1080p HD TV but it's still beautiful and this is now one of my favorite phone screens that I've ever owned and uh, we'll just open up Flipboard here and in general everything usually looks really good and I have to hand it to a company that before you know if you ask me who ZTE was three months ago I wouldn't even know it was a phone company so I'm really impressed by what they were able to put out so there's no complaint when it comes to display it's really clear it's really bright another huge huge plus I'd have to say with this phone is battery I usually have to go through so many hoops with my phone I spend 12 hours a day in a factory with no signal so I'm usually putting my phones on airplane mode battery saver mode being religious about turning up and down my brightness and on this phone I've learned if you do try to micromanage the screen brightness turn off all these things either has no effect or actually hurts the battery so most I do is turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth when not using it and that's it no airplane mode I keep this on automatic brightness which is one of the best automatic brightnesses I've seen on a phone it's never too bright or never too dark and I still come home after a 12 hour shift with almost no signal probably about two hours of on-screen time doing you know web browsing and Facebook I'll come home with 
60 to 70 percent of battery left and that's amazing because the best I've ever done was probably 30 percent and that was on the Microsoft phone so real real great battery a small thing I really appreciate about this phone is the wallpapers now you might be saying that's not really an important feature but on most phones when you get them you have to download Zedge and find your favorite wallpaper or have it loaded up but on this phone a lot of the basic wallpapers are some of the clearest HD wallpapers and they're very attractive I didn't use any because I'm a fan of dark backgrounds but I, for the first time ever I was really impressed by what was preloaded on this phone already so kudos there on uh, really coming up with some beautiful uh, wallpapers another standout with this phone is you long press and it brings up your normal widgets that you can load onto your phone a little app manager you can change wallpaper and lock screens but this is the first time I've seen this effect and this is where you can go through and choose how you want it to look when you swipe from page to page there's flip rotate roll and it's a really nice feature and it gives it a bit of uniqueness and it's these little things from a company I've never heard of that seem like wow this should have been on a lot more phones by now and it, I really appreciate that they you know they could just put out a really plain phone with a very vanilla OS and it's actually a pretty good skin I like the roll so we'll stay with that now a strange thing is the pull down menu you pull down you have your notifications and four toggles here now it'd be nice if you could swipe again and get the rest of the toggles but the way it works here is you press this arrow here and you get more toggles I, I think, just think two swipes would be enough and if you notice here it says input setting wallpaper setting where the notifications were when I did this now you think okay you press these set it and they disappear these aren't notifications it's just a very strange looking shortcut that they put here and it will always be there there is no way I've seen to dismiss it it's not a big deal it's just kind of strange and out of place and this is the settings and it's really bare I know this is Kit Kat but it's not that attractive which is strange because everything else about this skin that they have on Kit Kat is pretty good but it's just a bunch of different colors and a lot of things are missing uh, I do not disturb I'm used to that feature I had to download an independent app right here called Night Keepers to put my Do Not Disturb schedule on because I use my phone as an alarm clock also. Now this could be because maybe on KitKat they didn't have this feature yet but it is kind of annoying because I'd rather have these basic things on here. Also another thing is no flashlight app had to go and download an independent one and there's a lot of other things I can't think of at the moment but it there's not much here and if you've ever used uh, Android phone before you know these menus pretty well and when you start going into them you notice a lot a lot of things missing like for instance update your you know network status you know your PRLs to try to get a better signal I couldn't find that anywhere in here so yeah it's a little bare a little disappointing but you know it gets the job done you also have your choice of keyboards on this phone of course you could always uh, download them from the App Store but it comes with the Google keyboard and a keyboard called Touch Pal X which I don't like I am I just have the regular Google on now because the Touch Pal adds a ton of different things on to your keyboard all these different buttons it's just way too crowded and then you would hit a button up here and it brings up another menu that has you add more things to your keyboard and it's like just too much but the only thing about that keyboard that's nice is it's resizable so if you do have small hands you can make it bigger smaller whatever fits your preference and you can't do that with the 
Google keyboard. Uh, I think it might come enabled like that, and you have to go through the keyboard setting that I showed you before. But that's uh, one thing to consider. Or just go ahead, download Swipe or whatever you use. But uh, I found the Google keyboard to work pretty well. One thing I uh, found is there's really no standout widgets installed on this phone. And the one massive one that you start off on is a clock. And that clock is kind of ugly, according to me, of course. And uh, it uses AccuWeather. Now, I use Weather Channel. But when you put this clock on, it always uses AccuWeather. And AccuWeather, for some reason, insists on running. And I didn't have the time to try to search through the settings to get it out of my notification bar. It was always there. And I didn't want that extra battery drain, and I just don't use AccuWeather. If I'm going to use any weather app, it's going to be Weather Channel. And um, it was just really annoying, so I disabled it and got rid of it. Now this does come with some bloatware apps, your regular Cricut apps. It had a Kindle app. And most of it can either be disabled or even deleted. And uh, I just went through, did that real quick. I don't think I missed anything. And, uh, you know, when you do that, just make sure you're not doing something major that's not going to allow you to use video or photo. By now, if you've owned phones, you know which ones are the ones that can go. The icons on the phone are actually pretty neat. I like them. They're simple. Sometimes you get a phone and they're just too cartoony or something. But they're real nice. And uh, I don't feel a need to download an extra launcher because I really don't like launchers. I think that they just take up space and could possibly slow your phone down so the fact that these are acceptable is, is good it's just that uh, the camera it's this weird blue swirl thing that's probably the only icon I don't like but the rest are really attractive and uh, I like it and speaking of camera it is a real mixed bag now if you see my other reviews before I've usually done some uh, shots and then posted them on the video so you could see for yourself how well it or not well it does but I just couldn't do it I haven't had the time still working my 12 hour shifts but I will say from my use it's really a mixed bag it has a 13 megapixel back camera and a 5 mix megapixel front and the five, I have no uh, complaints about the front facing camera but when it comes to taking photos it's it's so here or there for one thing, never use HDR. It takes this phone so long to snap a picture in HDR that either your handshake or anything moving in the picture will make that picture come out incredibly blurry. And even without HDR on, still I was getting shots where it was blurry because it takes a while for the image to process. And it's, it's a mix, but I have gotten some good photos with it, but it's just the fact that um, it's here or there. If you go into the settings, you could probably tweak it. I'm not sure. Maybe its phone doesn't have image stabilization, and that could be part of the problem. But it's really a mixed bag. I did find that the zoom on the camera was actually pretty good, and pictures came out when zoomed. But uh, really, it's just something you have to experience and play with, and I just haven't had the time to. The flash on this phone is pretty fantastic. It's a nice big flash, and with the flashlight app installed, it can really light up a room. So uh, kudos there to uh, ZTE for making a pretty good flash. Another thing I noticed is previous Android phones I had had a simple way to cast your screen to my Microsoft display adapter. Uh, it's a mirror cast device. And so far on here, it might be just because it is KitKat. I haven't had much uh, time to play around with other KitKat phones. But on my previous phones, I always had something in the settings that said cast. And besides, you know, your standard Chromecast, which I haven't experimented with. I've seen things where people say they could use Chromecast to work with non-Chromecast devices, like my uh, Microsoft Display Adapter. But th there is no way to cast outside of that, and that's kind of disappointing. Because I always like the idea that if I'm traveling and I'm at a relative's house and I want to show them some pictures or videos from a vacation, I can just slap the display adapter into the TV, bring them up here so no, not everybody has to crowd around me and look at a phone. But it, it's a small thing, and if you don't ever 
think of using that. It's just something I noticed because of how much I use phones and how many different phones I've seen. And yes, this is my Microsoft page. It's one of the great things that Microsoft is doing is they're releasing apps so you don't have to be stuck on a Windows phone that doesn't have the apps you want. They're going to come to you it seems now and hopefully sometime soon we'll also get Cortana and I can stop struggling with OK Google because I despise OK Google. I won't get into that but here's Outlook apps that I have right now and there should be more in the future and it just goes to show you that I hate to come back to Microsoft I swear to God I'm not a fanboy but they're making the effort to try to you know become a different company and I appreciate it but uh, all in all I I can't complain about this phone at all you can get it from Cricut right now and uh, it's just a fantastic deal in my opinion the screen alone but prepare to struggle the first few weeks if you have tight pants this thing is going to wreak havoc on your pocket and I think any of the cons that this phone might have you know including the size are way way outweighed by the, having such a beautiful big screen at your disposal and I, I swear to God if you start using it and you go back to using even a five inch phone it's just it's not the same you feel like this phone is inferior it's smaller it's it's just not as good so I'd say give it a shot if you've been looking for something and it's really great as a tablet replacement if you don't have a tablet or you know a mobile device this can do it all I mean it really is a, a nice compromise but anyways guys uh, please like and subscribe I always appreciate that if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them and thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later